Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Martin, welcome to another trade in 212 episode. So in the last episode we obviously had three trades open, two of them are still open, and uh, yeah, one has got a bit not very good, but we have one trade that um, hit its pending order, and we can see right now that I think from um, was USD to Japanese yen, yes it was, it was on the sell side, uh, we hit from 110.48, went down 110.25, so quite a big drop, you know, what's that, Put 0.24, of a drop, it's quite quite a big drop to be fair. Uh, we made a nice forty one point eight two out of that. Now it's been a little bit, little bit of time. It's coming to the thirteenth, and that was a third. Um, you know, quite 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 a little bit, a little bit ago. Um, because I've been on holiday and stuff. But basically, we're getting back into it. Uh, so we have this Under Armour trade, or this Equity trade. We only bought a little bit, a little bit of experiment. One pound fifty. You know, cut cut a bit of profit. Uh, we bought it at fifteen point four six. It's currently at 16.24. So to be fair, it's doing quite well for us. It's doing really well for us. Let's have a look, let's have a look at the chart over the course of time. And our take profit is set here at 18. And our stop loss. Oh no, sorry, that's where the current price. Oh sorry, this is where we bought it. So we bought it at this level here. And it's currently rose to this level here. So to be fair, it's a little experiment we did. We know that holding five shares doesn't really give us any room for anything, so I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to close. Or do I have to to sell this equity? You need to buy it first. To sell this equity, you need to buy it first. I am so confused. How do, how 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 do equities work? Okay, so. I'm guessing I've been put on like a list or something. I I don't know how that works, but um, yeah, that's very interesting. This long term investment is going to stay long term because I can't cash it out normally like I could with any other trade. But we're going to ignore that for the minute and uh, move over to the Ripple trade. Someone could explain that to me, please, because I'm not f familiar with with equities, with um, ETFs and stuff like that. I'm not I'm not I'm not familiar with any of these brackets. Um, because I haven't had any like experience with them. I've only had experience with the currencies and uh, cryptocurrencies, commodities, and a couple like individual stocks. I haven't had you know any experience with these, so some information would be really nice then. But um, you know, you sell this equity, you need to buy it first. I don't understand that, so I'm just going to leave it. It's not like it's a big trade. Um, so yeah, so we also have this cryptocurrency of the Ripple. It's called Ripple. Not been doing too well recently. I'm currently dropped a, a point. 0.19 no, point, point 0.1922 bought it at 0.261 so I've seen a quite a fair big job quite a big job we do have our stop loss set at um at 0.17 so hopefully um, it won't hit that point I don't think there's any like resistance for it to go off of probably at this level here well we have this this sort of resistance pattern here but you know my stop loss has been placed at this at this point here which is like rock bottom right this is like rock bottom it's been over the past um you know few months obviously it's like worthless back here but of course it'll be worthless because nobody really um went into these sorts of cryptocurrency at that time so just gonna leave that how it is can't really do much with it and um and yeah so basically that's that's that so what we can do we can have a scour through the market see what's going on i know there's been a lot of um japanese yen uh, information recently a lot of lot of patterns a lot of interesting things that have happened with that and I, and I do like my Japanese yen just because of the fact it's very volatile and uh, um, you know the movement is really really good for a trader such as myself who likes to hold trades for like no longer than a day or two so um so as you can see this right here ca the came dollar Japanese yen so basically the Japanese yen has got weaker over the past uh, over the past say week uh, not even weak over the past few days. It's got very very weak, which means that um, currency pairs of or currencies have been paired with it. I've got we've got stronger. So as you can see, um, back three three days ago, it was at a price of eighty seven. So one one Canadian dollar would have been eighty seven. Now it's ninety. So one Canadian dollar is now ninety Japanese yen, which is crazy. Um, currently seeing a bit of you know resistance. Currently, you know it's not it's not really pushing up any further. Which signifies that it could be coming to the end of its long term point. You see, it's currently it's at, it's at the top of its RSI. Um, you know, so that signifies it. But I don't really want to touch it right now. 
just because of the fact that I don't really know what's going to do. So, um, so that's that's that. So we can we can look at the oh the USD to the South African rand is looking very interesting because look where it's at on on the RSI. RSI is really at the point, really tip of the tip of the graph. Let's expand it a little bit. Yeah, look at that. That is some crazy stuff. We could be seeing it could be seeing a drop in that real real soon. Um let's look at over a little bit of a further period of time. Let's look at one day. Yeah. Mm, that's very, very interesting. Um you see the funny funny thing is looking at the um, the Bollinger bands, they're not following. They're not following the cat this big candlestick. It's not it's not it's not following it for some reason, which is very interesting. Um Judging by the RSI, it's still room to grow. Um, it's currently hit, hitting multiple levels. A uh, level here, a level here, a level here of um, resistance. I always get confused between support and resistance. Um, it's hit, hitting quite a few resistance levels. But at the same time, it's really been fluctuating from this point. You know, it's, it's where my cursor is. This is the low point. This is the high point, And this red line has been the midpoint. It's been wavy, woo, 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 very wavy recently. So, you know, it could be an indication that it's going to grow even further over the course of this month. But to be fair, I can't can't really see it happening. Like, I, I can't see the South African rand getting like a lot a lot stronger um, apart from the dollar because the dollar, you know, there's you know big reports and stuff that will affect the markets a lot. Saying that has been a, been quite a big dip recently. You know, this could be the sig the signification. They will drop. I'm actually, I'm actually quite confident in my sell side for this. I might be a bit too overconfident for my sell side, but I am going to do it. I'm going to place. What's the maximum I can place? I place seventy-seven thousand. I'm going to place. Oh, I'm going to place fifteen. Fifteen thousand on the sell side. So we're going in favour of the South African rand here. Uh, so we want the dollar to get weaker over the course of this short period. Uh, we'll set it, usually we want to set it, you know, quite, give it a tiny bit of leeway. Yeah, that, that that looks pretty good. So if it hits this point here, it'll cash us out, and if it hits this point here, it'll cash us out. So that's pretty, that's pretty good. Um, let's zoom out a little bit and see where it stands on this level. Uh, so we want our take profit to be maybe a tiny bit higher to reach this point here. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to increase it, where does that take me, yeah that takes it at the level here, so this is like the like the last line of um, resistance, um, at this point here it's actually like no support, actually a little bit of support level right here, so you know this is where, this is like the perfect perfect place I want to set my, I want to set my uh, take profit and stop losses, um, so yeah that's uh, the first trade we're going to set up, coming down to 82% margin, could have room for one more trade, then we would have four open trades. That's a little bit interesting. What's Bitcoin doing recently? I've not really followed the cryptocurrencies as much. Oh my god, it has had a huge downturn. Woo! It, it, it was like on course to hit 5,000. What happened, dude? Whoa, 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 whoa. That is some crazy stuff. I mean, I know it dropped from... Like the four, the four, the four thousand seven hundred, four thousand six hundred level, but then it would dropped all the way to three thousand eight hundred. Woo! Dude, my girlfriend's dad is gonna be happy about this because he has real money on long. <laughs> He's going long on this. He's not gonna be happy. Oh jeez. One bitcoin could be worth about half the current value. Oh jeez. Wow. However, the smart man will buy when the price is low and not the opposite. Well, I mean, quite clearly. Um, Ethereum looking similar to Bitcoin, but with the RSI slightly higher, which makes me think there still has a little gap to go down. I set up a pending order to buy at 285 in case it confirms the bounce back. My stop loss on this one is at 270, and I have another pending order 260 for the RSI reason. Uh, cool. Can we have a look? Oh, this is interesting. Oh, this is groovy. This guy clearly likes his cryptocurrencies. Um, that's a very interesting graph, right there. Yeah, it's true. It's currently hit a bit of a, a bit of a point on the RSI. Let's zoom out a little bit so we can look at the RSI in a little bit more detail. Yeah, look at this. So we have point here, point here, point here. Then as soon as it hit that level, boom, bounce back, bounce back, 
bounce back. You know, what's this? 24.7. This is 20. So it could have a little bit, little bit more to go. Downward, that is. Um, might set up a pending order. Um, could drop to what? The th uh, could it drop to 3,600? That'd be a bit crazy. Um, so we're looking at this point here, the 20 level. This is when it hit 3,600. Currently at 3,800. Could it hit the 3,600 again? I think so. so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a pending order. Uh, how do I do this? Um, open detail trade box. We want a pending order. We want the buy side. We want quantity of one, please. What I can get. Yeah, I can have maximum quantity. We're going to go one because I'm, no, I'm just not, not going any more than one. And we're going to set that price at um, 36.50 on the buy side. Boom. There we go. So if, if the, so the current price is 3.834, if it hits 3.650, if it drops 200 points, then it will buy for me automatically. So if it does hit that level, I'm expecting, expect, expecting it to bounce up a little bit. Um, can I edit the order to have? No, I can't. I can't like set up stop loss, and take profit with it. That's okay. Um, oh, so this is actually processing my sell. Oh, I actually has to process the sell of the equity. That's interesting. That's cool. Um, but yeah, so that's that's what we do. So we have currently we have four, well, three, like three and a half trades open. Um, because I am expecting this book Bitcoin to drop to the thirty six fifty level. Um, because then you know that that will then open us up with that trade. Um, we don't need to see any of that nonsense. Um, so three current trades open. We have the Under Armour equity that we're going to cash out at that level there. You know, just a little test. Um, probably could get into a little bit more equities. You know, uh, it's not really something I. I know much of. I obviously know about these companies and stuff, but I, you know, stuff that I'd have to look into a lot more to actually, you know, um, put money on it. Let's look at Mark, Mark and Spencer, shall we? Mark, Mark and Spencer's currently trading at three, two, four. Currently, it's actually quite strong. To be fair, it's quite a strong stock. What is that about? Whoa! Look at that. Was that a drop? Look, I mean, look at that drop. That's a bit crazy. Um. No, to be fair, this graph has given me nothing. Like, this is a really boring graph. Um, I'm just looking. Look at these candlesticks, man. This does that indicate an actual drop? And look at this. Those are some wacky candlesticks. It's done it quite a lot. Look, look at these ones here as well. That's some wacky candlesticks. <laughs> that's that's insane. Um, can I, how much could I buy? I can buy 120 if I wanted to. Do I do I believe in Marks and Spencers? Not not really. Um, in fact, it does look like it's it's going to be on a bit of an uptrend just because of the fact that it's actually been quite strong recently and just come off the back of a downturn. Now it's leveling out. So you know what? Just for the lulls, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put twenty on the buy side. Uh, I place an order. Yeah, okay. Oh, my order's been executed. I bought twenty shares of Marks and Spencers. Cool. I'm currently down four p. <laughs> <laughs> this is funny. This is good to play with, though, to get my head around it. Um, sure, like fifty either way, really, really. What if I put five? It'll be twenty-five. Wow, it has to move twenty-five points either way. That is some crazy stuff. What happened? I lost the trade. Why did it close? It closed my trade. I lost 4p. Why did it close my trade? G give me back. I want my trade back. Order has been placed. Can I not set stop losses or something? Like, what was it too close? Was the stop loss too close to the original amount? I don't know. I'm just gonna leave it. <laughs> I'm not gonna set. I just lost 4p. I'm so mad. No, it's okay. Um, yeah. So we have now have Marks and Spencers on our on our instrument list as well. Have Under Armour, which was selling, and Marks and Spencers. To be fair, it's actually good to hold on to these because the small profits over time can be a lot. Like we're 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 looking on selling. We're looking to sell this a profit of one pound fifty. It's one pound fifty we didn't have before, you know. So holding holding say ten or twenty of these different stocks and having them 
most of them turn a profit. Like say seventy five percent of them turn a profit. That's a that's a solid profit. Like ten ten pounds. You know, that's some good stuff. Like short. Bloody hell! My phone just buzzed. I bought thirty shares of. I know I bought thirty shares. Why is it popping up now? It's actually good to hold like a few of these because you know you're. If if you get into into the market at the right time, then it's just gonna it's just gonna well it's it's a kind of like a low risk type thing. Uh, let's have a quick look at the cryptocurrencies. I'm interested in looking at Litecoin actually. I'm just see what's doing. Currently trading at 58. Wow, it's low. That is some low stuff. All cryptocurrencies are being horrendous at the moment. Hit a high of what's that? Nearly 90. So 90. I'm assuming it's 90 dollars to one crypto to one Litecoin. Um, coming on a bit of a downturn. I want to look at the candlestick. Yeah, it's not really. Yeah, it's not. Not really giving too much. It's coming like. It's at its lowest it's been for a while, like a while, while, like back back in like the end of August, so last month, you know, about 20 days ago. Very, very low. Is this something where I can... Uh, let's, read, let's read what people are saying about it. They took a hit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Same thing, what they said. So Bitcoin was actually down 8%. Litecoin down 11%, Ethereum down nearly 10%. Wow. That's some crazy stuff. Um, but just because a, just because the JP Morgan CEO said the cryptocurrencies are fraud that will eventually blow up, they decided to the cryptocurrency itself actually blew up. That's a bit ridiculous, in my opinion. Um, some poor guy at this level said to buy. <laughs> oh no, that's not good. Bitcoin is not considered the most crowded trade, and measured by a sentiment in the monthly Bank of America Merrill Lynch Fund Manager survey. Uh, uh, yeah, um, yeah. Do I really want to touch Litecoin? Not really. I could buy 141 of it. I'm not. I'm not interested. So I'm just going to leave it how it is. We have four open trades. We have a Bitcoin trade on um on the pending. Uh, so if it hits 3650, it will buy it for us uh, on the long position. So that is all the trades to this episode. Uh, we did make a little profit at the start from that. It was around about. I think it's forty forty dollars. Sorry, forty dollars, forty pounds. Yeah, forty pounds from the uh, from the dollar to the Japanese yen on the sell side. That's a nice little profit there. Um, but yeah, so these are these are the trades we have. The or the four the four trades and one pending order we have. Hopefully, these can do good things for us. Uh, I predict they do. So um, yeah, uh, please um, make sure to leave a like on the video. Comment down below any suggestions or anything like that. And yeah, make sure have a nice day. Check out all the links in the description to the books. And yeah, make sure, make sure you have a nice day. Stay safe, enjoy your training, and peace.